Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, a tabletop sheet music stand. Well, I love to make music and I love to play instruments and you don't always want to have your full music stand set up. Sometimes it's nice while you're working on a song trying to figure out chord progressions or bass lines or what have you, it's sometimes nice to just sit at your desk with your music propped up and be able to work on it without disrupting your normal routine too much. Now with that being said, the way I do it now is I have it lying flat on the desk and it drives me crazy because I can't see it very well. So I got to thinking could I make a wooden desktop foldable music stand? And that's what we're going to work on today. And we're going to head over to the bench and I'll show you where we're going to start. Well, I have spent a good portion of my morning working on this uh, Frankenstein's monster here. Basically what it is, is it's somewhat of a prototype for my music stand, my tabletop music stand. I know it doesn't look like much, but it's really only half of the working mechanism. It will be mirrored on both sides. And what I'm looking to accomplish is to fold out the music stand and have it sit something like this. And then this will just be one half. There will be a duplicating half on the other side. And there will be a bottom tray lip down here and you will be able to prop your music up and uh, view it, etc., etc., and hopefully it'll be just fine. Um, so I guess the first thing that we want to do is we want to cut this center main piece of our music stand. And for that, we're going to need a piece of half inch thick material, two and a half inches wide, 10 and a quarter inches long. And I'm going to be making this out of walnut. So now with that piece cut, I need to put a rabbit on each one of these edges here that will help to house the rest of our pieces. And that rabbit is going to be a total of a quarter inch deep and it's going to be five eighths of an inch wide and it will carry on for the entire length of our piece. So I'm just gonna take this over to the router table, install a straight bit in the table and I'll cut that rabbit. And just to finish off this one piece, I've drawn a center line and at the top, whichever that may be, it's up to you, I'm going to draw a one and three quarter inch radius at the top of this piece. And then we're gonna take it over to the scroll saw, cut it out, sand it up to the line, and uh, that should finish off this piece nicely at the top. Well, we now want to make some of our other pieces. And the first pieces that we're going to need will be our bottom stretchers here. And for that, we're gonna need two pieces. They will be a quarter of an inch thick, one inch wide, and we are going to make them eight inches long. Well, eventually these pieces will sit here like this. But what I want to do is using a one inch circle template on this top inside corner of each one of these pieces, I'm going to place a one inch arc in there from a one inch circle template. And once we get it on there, we're gonna take it over to the scroll saw, cut it and sand it up to the line just to finish it off. And those pieces will eventually sit here, something like that. So we now need to make our uprights. And for our uprights, we're going to need two pieces. It's going to be cut from one quarter inch stock. It'll be half an inch wide and 10 inches long. We'll need one for each side. Well, those pieces will eventually get mounted right here. But what I want to do is I want to get a half inch circle template and on the top edge of each one of these pieces, we're going to round this off just to soften up the, uh, the look a little bit. So I'm going to mark them and take them over to the sander and sand these off 
to their half inch circle. So we now need another cross member that will come straight across here. And that as well is going to be uh, made from quarter inch thick stock. It will be uh, half an inch wide, same as our upright pieces, but we're going to need two pieces that are going to be nine inches long. Now, just as we did with our other pieces, what I'm going to do with these two is on the outside edges of both of them, we're going to use a half inch circle template, mark it out and then round off both of those ends. But on these inside ones, just like we did for the bottom ones here, we're just going to do the top inside corner uh, with the half inch template. So again, I'm gonna mark them out, sand them, and then I'll come back and see you. And those will sit somewhere along the lines of right about there. Well, there's two more pieces that we need to make. And again, half inch wide, a quarter inch thick, and they will be 10 inches long. So I'm gonna cut two of them and then I will come back and see you. And for each one of those pieces, I have rounded off with the half inch circle template at both ends of our piece. And that is, for now, all of the pieces that we need to fit our music stand together. So the first thing that we're going to do is we want to concentrate on these two pieces. So we're gonna put everything else aside and I'll show you what you need to do. Well, from the bottom of each piece, we're going to place a mark along the length, one at five and a quarter inches up and one at seven and a quarter inches up. And we're gonna do that on both of our pieces. Five and a quarter and seven and a quarter. And we can square those off and what they are going to be is they are going to be our slot where these pieces will slide along. Now on the opposite end of where we just placed those marks, we're going to place a line a quarter of an inch in, so a center line here, and then in from the end, we'll place a line at quarter inch as well. We'll do that on both pieces. And those will be for our holes that will accept our joinery for this, or these arms. So a quarter inch center line, and then a quarter inch up from the bottom. Now on each one of these lines that we drew part way up of our pieces, right in the middle, we're going to drill a 3 16 diameter hole right on each one of those lines. The one that we marked down here at a quarter inch and a quarter inch, quarter inch in the middle and a quarter inch in from the end, we're going to drill a through 5 32nd diameter hole. Now with those two holes drilled, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect the outside of each one of those holes with a line. And I'm gonna take it over to the scroll saw, cut carefully along that line, and that will give us our slot for our adjustment. Um, I guess I'll see you when I get that done. And those pieces will eventually go somewhere, I don't know, somewhere around there. I'll show you how to line them up a little later. So what we need to do now is drill our holes in these bottom pieces. Now you really wanna be careful here how you line them up. So from our edge here, our end with the one curve, we're going to come in one quarter of an inch. and we're going to square that line off. And now one quarter of an inch from the top edge, we're going to place a mark 
and that will be the place that we will drill our 532nd diameter hole. And we're going to do that for both pieces. Now on the other side of our piece, it's the complete opposite. So we will place a line quarter of an inch up from the bottom and a quarter of an inch in from the end. And that will be where we place our 532nd diameter hole. So we now want to take these upright pieces and on the bottom edge, a quarter of an inch up and centered, we want to drill the 532nd inch hole in each one of our side uprights. And there you go, they will sit just like that. And now there's more holes to drill and that will be on these two pieces right here, our top horizontal pieces. And a quarter of an inch in and a quarter of an inch up, so centered, we're going to drill another, you guessed it, 532nd diameter hole in the ends of each one of these. Well, we now want to drill the holes that will allow us to mount our lower brackets. So for that, right in this recess area right here, quarter of an inch up, quarter of an inch in, a 532nd inch hole on both surfaces. Well, the way that this is going to get assembled is with drive pin rivets. And what we're going to do is we're just going to use the sleeves for now and we're just going to dry fit this stuff together. These are actually too long for what I need, but I'm trying to do a dry fit just to make sure that everything is fitting. And we need to take some measurements as to where things fit together. So these ones here are a given. This is where they go as is this one and this one here. There is no variables there. It's, it's where they go, they cannot go anywhere else. The big question here is where the other holes go and for that we have to start lining it up, taking careful measurements and drilling holes as we go. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this upright clamped down so that it has some stability while we're working on it. Okay, so I have that clamped down ready to go. And the first thing that we want to do is we need to mount our side pieces. That will be these ones right here. Now we already know the measurement that they're going to be in from the edge here as far as our holes, hole goes. That will be a quarter of an inch. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that our bottom is square to our frame. There we go, just like that. And we now need to measure up from this top edge right here. We're going to measure up seven and a half inches and that will be the bottom of this brace that we're trying to figure out at the moment. So if we come up seven inches, we can actually come up seven and a quarter, and that will give us the position of our hole because it's going to be centered on that half inch piece. So now we will do the exact same thing on this side. Square it off to make sure that everything is lined up. Hold it in place and place a mark at seven and a quarter up from the, from the edge of this board and that will be our hole location. So at that point, we can measure in a quarter of an inch and drill our 532nd hole. And with those holes drilled, we can put our drive rivets through there just to keep everything in place. And that will give us a rough idea of how things are aligning. So when this folds up, it will do something like, hmm. We seem to have a problem here. 
and that is this is supposed to be below this. I'm going to double check my measurements. I may have marked something incorrectly. Um, I'm going to check that and see what I come up with, but something is definitely off here. So I may end up with a little hole there that I didn't want. So let me look into it and I'll let you know what I discover. Well, as it turns out, those holes were actually three quarters of an inch too low. 100% um, user error, no one to blame but myself. But you know what, I'm gonna see a little later if we can incorporate that into some kind of a design feature. Eh, we will see how it goes. But as I was trying to say before, when it folds up, these should all end up something like this. Now it looks like it's going to fold up just fine, but we still need to attach these cross braces to our uprights. So for that, all I'm going to do is the same as what we did before. I'm going to get this squared off. Once we get that done, I'm gonna square this off. Then I'm gonna square this off and wherever that ends up being over here, that is where I'm going to center punch and drill our 532nd inch through hole right through both pieces, centered on both. So I'm going to drill these two, get them all aligned, and then when I get the pins temporarily in place, I'm going to come back and see you. Well, truth be told, after I measured and drilled and did what I had to do, it didn't fold up as nicely as what I wanted it to. So I changed my design, my design, my prerogative. And I added a little slot here. I don't even know. I know it's 3 16 of an inch wide, same as our other one. And it is 3 quarters of an inch long. And what that will allow this piece to do is it gives it that little bit of leeway. Let me just put this back together here and I'll show you. It gives it that little bit of leeway so that when we're squared up here like this, it will allow us to fold it up. It'll pivot on the top. And if you watch the top there, it slides back out and lines itself up perfectly. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing with this side to make sure that everything folds up just the way I want on that side as well. All right, and with both of those done, we're just going to test how it closes. And it closes just fine. Look, oh, wait a second here. We got a little bit of a, uh, this one here sits nice and flush, but for some reason, this one here is sitting a little proud. So I'm gonna investigate what that is. I get the feeling that my hole at the top end is not elongated enough. And if that is the case, that is an easy fix. And yes, that is exactly the case. So that's an easy one. I'm just going to make that hole just a little larger up at this end and that will correct that problem. And then once I get that corrected, I'm happy with the way it folds, we can look at mounting these pieces. And hopefully we'll just check that. Yes, and it closes perfectly now. Believe it or not, that was about just a little under 1 16th of an inch out. That is all it took to make it so that this thing did not fold up flat like I wanted it to. Crazy. But we got her now, so we're good to go. So these pieces here actually are stops, and they make it so that our um, entire fold-out pieces end up being perfectly square to the main body piece of our music stand. So the first thing we need to do is, well, square it up so we know that we're starting with a square uh, frame to begin with. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a point somewhere in the middle, roughly in the middle, and we're going to line it up and we'll mark for our hole where we want to put it. 
that will be its lowest point. It can't go any further. You just want to make sure that wherever you put it, when you fold it back up again, there's going to be enough room for it to, uh, in your slot, for it to finish folding completely. And it looks like we're fine there. So I'm going to go mark about halfway through, drill a 532nd hole in the middle here, and then I'll show you what to do from there. And with some careful measuring folded up, it should look like this. But when you release the two sides, it will fold down into your music stand. Now, here's the thing. It doesn't hold any music at this point in time because we don't have a lip here to hold it. But we're going to add that afterwards. At this point in time, you can go around, give everything a really good sanding, remove all of your pencil marks. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to put this together using our drive pin rivets. Well, just before we assemble this, there's one thing that I forgot to mention, and that's um, the point that where each one of these heads will be for our drive pin rivets, I will be drilling a Forstner bit hole to recess the pin heads. That way they're not going to interfere when our uh, music stand folds up. So just don't forget to drill your recesses. Well, if you've followed along so far, you should have, at this point, kind of a cool folding music stand. But we need to add that bottom lip now so that our music won't fall off. So what I've done is I have taken a piece of walnut, just a scrap, three quarter inch piece, out of the wood rack. I've cut it to be an inch and a half wide and it is seven and a quarter inches long. I've cut a rabbit in it, and that rabbit is half an inch by one and a quarter. And I've made two of these, and what they will do is they will glue right in here just like that. One on each side, even with the end of our bottom rail here. But I don't like these sharp corners. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to round those off. And then once we get them rounded off, we will glue this in place so that our music has a shelf to sit on. Well, I toyed around with several ideas as to how to make this stand up. And I finally decided on keeping it as simple and as low profile as I could. So what I've done is out of half inch walnut, I've cut it the same width as our main spine. I have duplicated the profile from the top of our spine to here, just for aesthetics. And what I've done is I've cut here uh, parallel sides and I've cut them at an angle of 15 degrees. What I'm going to do is eventually when these open up, it will stop like this, giving us our stand. It's hard to do with everything all apart like this. but. Our stand will sit just like this at an angle that I think will work just perfectly for what it is that I use it for. But either way, I'm going to get this attached and when I get this all finished, I'm going to come back and show you what it is that I came up with for the final product. So our original prototype is nothing more than hammer and nail together pieces of quarter inch MDF nails sticking out everywhere. Uh, it was just toying around trying to figure out how to make this work. And honestly, I think that in order to go from this to our final product here of this, I think we've really, um, I, th I think we've really achieved something here today. And I love the way this turned out. And there you have it. A tabletop folding music stand. Guys, this project, 
you know what? It took a long time to do. And the reason it took so long to do is because there was no pattern. There was no plan. I had an idea in my head of what I wanted to happen. And I had an idea in my head of, of how I needed to make it happen. And then from there, it was just figuring out dimensions. So making our prototype here um, from the MDF, even though it is the most rustic thing in the world, it got me far enough in the process that it showed me that it was possible and it was worth carrying on to the next step, which was getting involved in cutting up the walnut and that sort of thing. Speaking of the walnut, this entire project was made, I know, here it comes, from scrap wood. It was all made, every bit of it, from little bits of scrap that were up in the rack that were left over from older projects. And recently I cleaned up the wood rack as I do every once in a while and I gathered up all those scraps and I put them in one area so I could go through them and see what was usable and what wasn't. And these are all usable scrap pieces that I found in the rack. Don't throw away your offcuts. If the offcut is this long, get rid of it. But if the offcut is four inches or more, hang on to it, especially if you're into things like model building and that sort of thing, or smaller projects like this, because they will always come in handy. Um, like I said, they came in real handy here when this one was made. Now these drive pin rivets that make the whole thing hinge and the whole thing work, um, these are a little, they're a little uh, tarnished. They are brass and they will tarnish and I will probably give them a little polish or something before I apply the finish. I haven't really decided yet but either way a finish will be applied to this and as usual in, in this scenario anyway it will most likely be Danish oil just to finish it off and give it that nice dark color and that satin finish that I like on some of these projects. Either way, guys, if you're someone that loves to play music or you're someone who knows someone who loves to play music and they're on your gift list, this may be a project that you want to consider because I'm telling you to receive one of these as a gift, I guarantee you will floor them when you, uh, when you give it to them. Guys, this project's been a load of fun. Uh, it started off as I think I would like to buy and then it ended up as uh, I'm going to make this and somewhere in the middle it went through the stage of I wonder how I could do it. But as you saw on today's show, you know what, it's completely possible to do. It's just a little bulkier than the store-bought ones because of course it's made out of wood. We did have a few problems along the way with things not fitting correctly and that sort of thing, but you overcome those. The uh, holes that I drilled accidentally, they ended up with two new drive pins that actually helped to hold the stand on, uh, on onto the main spine of our music stand. So those holes got used. It, it looks like they're functional. It also looked like I meant to do it. And if anyone asks, I meant to do it. Guys, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. It's been a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed the content. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're going to try this for yourself. I hope that it's inspired you to go through your scrap bin and see what you can make. And more importantly, I hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.